Okay, what you're seeing now is some sample footage from the FX30. Now I've had this camera for about a week and uh, here I am at a local grass track meeting and I was just trying out the focus. First of all, I couldn't figure out the autofocus, why it wasn't working at all. Um, and then thanks to Cole, IMCE, big shout out to Cole because he's really helped me with the uh, FX30 in deciding what to get and, and whether to buy it or not. So go check him out, IMCE, he's a fantastic YouTuber and Instagram guy. Um, so I'm trying out the autofocus. These are fairly fast moving subjects. Thought it was a good idea to, uh, to use them as a subject. And what I'm doing is I'm tapping on the various subjects as they come by on the screen to see if the FX30 will pick them up. I was using the Sony 28mm f2 lens, which is a pretty cheap lens, but a pretty good lens. So as these vehicles come past, I'm tapping on them as soon as I see them. And pretty much 95% of the time, it was holding onto them while they were on screen. I have graded, obviously, and it was a very overcast day. So any sort of whited out sky is mostly because it was pretty much like that when I recorded it. There wasn't much difference. It wasn't a blue sky that I'd blown out. It was actually just like that. Now I've come from the Blackmagic Pocket 4K and I love that camera, but there's a bunch of things wrong with that camera um, and a bunch of things right with it. But I have to say, I was really ready for the FX30 to be pretty terrible, you know, to, to not be as good quality, to uh, be very hard to use in post. And actually when I was using this camera, I was, I was wary of that and trying to expose correctly. Some I didn't. Um, but even then, I feel like it's been fairly flexible in post. I've been recording 10-bit uh, 422 internally, and it's come out really well. I mean, this day I was filming. I didn't have an ND. Although it was overcast, it was pretty bright. So a lot of the times I'd be filming at like F2 and uh, a very high shutter speed. This was more normal, more normal shutter speed. This is out in the field near where I live. And... Uh, what a lovely cow we're filming. And like I say, I was really impressed with the autofocus. This is mainly what I was trying to do, was test the footage a little bit and also test the autofocus and see what it could actually cope with. And I was tapping on the cow there and it was sticking to it. Now this one was interesting. So what I was trying here was actually uh, tapping from the barbed wire fence to the building in the background. Every time I did it, it got it. There was no focus, I think it was great. This one thought I'd just tap on a vehicle coming up the road, see if it stuck to it, and I actually did. You know, sometimes it would be a little bit confused. The cyclist it stayed on. So to be fair, you know, if you're a really great focus puller, you should be able to handle this. Totally understand, you know, and focus pulling manually is obviously the way to go if you can. If you've got the time, you can do it. But if you haven't, it's great. Now this one, I was uh, same village as just before, I was in the graveyard. Now the sun really had gone down at this point, hence why the lights are on the uh, on the church there. It's not normally that colour. This is night, and that's lights pointing up at it. And yes, there is some noise in that footage, but it was very dark. I'd amped this way up in the grade, and it stuck to my friend there walking ahead. And the stabilisation I was actually really impressed with, considering this was just handheld, no gimbal. It was just handheld. It was really good, but it managed to stick to her. Um, Apart from the times that I'm clicking on the church to see if it will just bounce back and forward between them. But yeah, when I wanted it to be on her, it stayed on her. And that was really impressive to know that I can rely on the focus. Because, I have to admit, I can focus pull manually, but I'm not great. I'm not quick. I'm certainly not as quick as uh, this thing itself, you know. So, as we look at more footage, we can see uh, this one had a little bit of noise. And I cleaned it up with a bit of uh, noise reduction. And I think it cleans up pretty well, to be honest. So this follows on, and I was in a place called Tewkesbury in England, and there was a museum there, and it's a very small museum. But the first bit you walk into is a recreation of a 1930s or 40s fairground in England. And uh, it's all made out of wood, and some other parts are actually mechanical. And I was just testing out the focus to see how close it could focus on this uh, lens, which is only a cheap lens, but it's actually a really good lens, as you can see. And when I tap one figure to another figure, it was getting it. And then as the uh, 
fairground ride starts in the background. I thought I'd tap on that, see if it confused it at all. And of course, it's not perfect. The focus is not perfect. Let's not over overemphasize that. You know, it's great focus. Is it reliable in most circumstances? Well, apparently so. And uh, I think it grades really well. No, it didn't take much effort to get a nice looking image out of this. I was shooting log, S log 3 AS, in Cine EL mode, and it takes some time to understand the ISO values and how it works if you come from different cameras, but it seems to get it. Now, here's the thing I liked about this one. Um, maybe some people see this as a problem, but zooming on in this little tent here, you can see the detail on that fabric there. It's, it's crazy detailed. Like, I use the Blackmagic 4K and I love that camera, but the detail isn't always there. I'm sure some people can get it, but this just, just seems to get it straight off. The focus is just bang on and it locks on to these things as well. So it's really great, really useful for a lot of circumstances, I think. Definitely saves single shooters or small crews a lot of time if you can rely on your focus much more. I'm still learning the the focus modes and what works best for different circumstances, the sensitivity and the um, responsiveness to different things. That's something that you probably want to adjust every different job you do. And here's another part of the Tewkesbury Museum, which looks at the Tewkesbury battle that took place many hundreds of years ago. And there's a recreation of that every year just outside the town. And these commemorate that. And there are some various artifacts from the medieval era. I think most of these ones that you can see like this are reenactment armour made very recently. And this is in Tewkesbury Abbey, which is a fantastically gorgeous building. And... Uh, I just thought I'd test the focus there. There was a little bit where it was a little bit confused by the prongs that stuck up on that candle holder, but basically got it. Now, here's me moving towards this part of the, the abbey, and, yeah, this is all handheld. It's a little bit jerky, but considering this is handheld, I've been walking along. That's actually pretty smooth. I think this grades really well. And coming up to the end again, just some more artifacts. It's always nice to film things that are gold. It looks really good. Anyway, thanks for watching. And again, thanks to Cole, thanks to IMCE, and uh, go check his stuff out, because uh, if I hadn't checked his stuff out, I wouldn't have bought any FX30, and I have, and I'm really pleased with it. See you later.